Welcome to this screencast on getting started with Mindscape Lightspeed and Dynamic Data. First thing I'm going to do is create a new project. It's going to be a web project targeting Microsoft Dynamic Data web application. I'm just going to call it Demo. Click OK. Let Visual Studio create that project for us, which only takes a moment. And there we go. Okay, I'll pin that there. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need to add is a Mindscape Lightspeed data model. So we'll create a new item. And under data, we select Lightspeed model and we'll call this the store model. And what I'm going to do is just quickly drag and drop some tables that I'd created earlier. And we're just going to use this model. I'm going to save that. That's all we have to do for the model side of things. The next we need to set up the configuration for the Dynamic Data website. There's already a web config here because Dynamic Data creates a, a fairly lengthy web configuration file. So we're just going to be augmenting some sections here. The first thing we're going to need to add is a connection string to our database. So we'll just overwrite this empty block here. And this is just a connection to my local SQL Server database. Next we're going to need to add a Lightspeed context. So I'll just put that here. So this is just a Lightspeed context called development using this local SQL Server database using SQL Server 2005 or above. Now we just need to add our own configuration section so that our application understands how to read this block. So we'll just put that at the top here. Excellent. And we'll make one last change, and that is down here in the Pages section, we're going to be referencing a Lightspeed control that's useful for dynamic data. So the first thing we're going to want to add is a application reference. And we'll just go to your Mindscape Lightspeed install directory. And you'll see Mindscape Lightspeed web.dynamicdata. We'll add that. We'll close that off a bit more space and we're just going to add another tag prefix in here. Okay so let's have a little bit of a look at this. So we're creating this tag prefix called ls because we're going to go through shortly and replace all the references to the default boilerplates uh, link providers to using Lightspeed as the back end using the model that we've created. So the tag prefix ls using the namespace mindscape.lightspeed.web.name dynamic data within that assembly that we just referenced, mindscape.lightspeed.web.dynamicdata. This saves us from having to put this into the top of every ASPX page that we have. So we'll click save there. we can finished with the config. Now the next thing we need to do is go and replace all of those link boilerplate controls that I mentioned. And there are a few in here so I'm going to use a find and replace. So we'll do a quick replace and we're going to change ASP colon link data source down to alias lightspeed link data source. So this was the prefix that we registered in the web config moments ago. We're going to change them across the whole project so we'll click replace all and done. So I'll click OK on that. We'll close that and we'll close all of these tabs. Yes. Okay. One of the final things we need to do is actually set up our Lightspeed context so that Dynamic Data knows how to talk to our Lightspeed model. And we can do that within the global ASAX. So there's a bit of interesting reading here that you may want to go and read uh, on your own time if you're doing a fair bit with Dynamic Data. But I'm just going to skip over that for now and just create our Lightspeed context. Okay, so we'll add a reference. So what I've done here is I've created a Lightspeed context using our store model unit of work. Now this was generated for us in the code behind of the model that we created earlier using the Lightspeed designer. So whatever you've called your, uh, your model there will be called that unit of work. So that's where that's coming from. And then we're saying that we equal a new Lightspeed context and we're passing in this argument here of development and that's reading out of the web config the configuration settings for this context. So it's picking up whoopsie, this one here, development. Okay, 
So that's fairly straightforward. And then we finally need to do a little bit of magic down here where we connect our Lightspeed model and context to the dynamic data system. Okay. So we've got a few references to add here, mainly in that dynamic data assembly that we added a reference to earlier. Now what this will do is we set up our Lightspeed data model provider and then we can set up some configuration around the provider and context for dynamic data where we can say what tables we want to scaffold. And this block here is effectively setting up um, a pass through for Lightspeed validations through to the dynamic data validation system so that if we don't complete fields when we're adding items to collections or creating new objects we will see those validation errors surfacing through dynamic data. Now all of this here is within the Lightspeed help documentation under help topics, web tools, dynamic data and dynamic data validation. All that's left now is to run this up and we'll see what happens. So just hit F5, up comes IE. Okay, so we see all of the different types that we created in our domain model there. We've got our SKUs, receipts, products, etc. And if we click on SKUs, let's see what we get. So we've got all of the rows in our database here showing up. We've got actions that we can perform against them. Oh, but we do notice one problem here. We've got this product coming up as product ID equals one entity state equals default. Now this is because it's a referenced object. It's associated to a SKU. SKUs belong to products, so all of these exist in the collection of SKUs belonging to whatever product one is. If we can click on that and jump through and see that it's genes. Okay. Now the reason that uh, this is rendering in this manner is because the way that dynamic data is written is to use the toString method that is on all objects to represent that object when it's referenced. Now Lightspeed by convention will generate a toString method on all of your entities which shows the ID of the entity and its current state to help you debug your Lightspeed entities and work with them uh, more effectively as a developer. So what we're going to want to do is go and override the toString method on any of the entities that we want to work with within d dynamic data. So let's go and do that now just to see what we have to do. So we close that. Now the easiest thing is to jump back into our Lightspeed model and we're going to set up a two string. I'm just going to do it on one of the uh, one of the entities here. I'm going to uh, do it on product. So product. We can right click and refactor, and we're going to create a partial class. The reason that we do this is because we don't want to go and modify the code that's generated behind the scenes. Uh, by the Lightspeed model designer because it will get regenerated over the top of if we make any changes to the model. So we use a partial class, we override toString, and we just want to return the name of the product. So I'll hit play, run up our website and see if that's made any difference. Give it a moment to load. Okay, we go to SKUs. And you now see that we see genes coming out for the product, which makes it a lot more usable and user-friendly for people. Now if we added a new item here, we get this, uh, this dialog up here. Now you'll notice if we click Insert that we get this validation uh, errors appearing. This is all handled as part of the, the Lightspeed Dynamic Data um, capabilities, where we pass through our validation information to the Dynamic Data Validation System that we did in the uh, Global ASAX. Let's close this guy. Just down here. And there's more information about this uh, as well within the Lightspeed help documentation. So let's add another one. Genes 5 or 6. Um, mega genes. Awesome genes for awesome people and we'll make them $200. Now we can insert that and instantly see that we've got our mega genes appearing in our collection here. So hopefully that's been a quick introduction to how to get Lightspeed working with dynamic data quickly and easily. And we appreciate any feedback that you have on any of these screencasts or on Lightspeed as a product in our online forums. Thank you very much for your time and for watching.